the man that he shot and killed, his mother's boyfriend, well, that man was a deputy sheriff. And because he was a deputy sheriff, the prosecutor insisted that this child be tried as an adult. And they immediately certified him to stay in trial as an adult, and they put him in the adult jail. His grandmother called me after he'd been there for three days and asked me to get involved. I went to the jail, and I uh, sat in there, and this little boy came in, and he sat down. And I started asking him questions, but no matter what I asked him, he wouldn't say a word. He just sat there. I finally put my pen down, and I said, look, I can't help if you don't talk to me. you got to talk to me. The little boy wouldn't say anything. I got up, I walked around the table, I pulled my chair close to him, I said, come on, you got to talk to me, I can't help you if you don't talk to me, you got to talk to me. And he just kept staring at a wall, he would not say anything, couldn't figure out what to do. And at some point, I decided to just lean on him, I don't even know why, but I leaned on this little boy, and when I leaned on him, he leaned back. And when he leaned back, I put my arm around him, and I said, come on, you got to talk to me, I can't help you if you don't talk to me, and that's when this child started to cry. And through his tears, he began talking to me, not about what happened with his mom, not about what happened with the man, but he started talking to me about what had happened at the jail. He told me on the first night, several men had hurt him. He told me on the next night, uh, several people had raped him. He told me on the night before I'd gotten there, so many people had hurt him, he could not remember how many there had been. I held this little boy while he cried hysterically for almost an hour. I finally got him calm and I said, look, I'm going to get you out of here. You stay right here. I'm going to get you out of here. And I never will forget that child grabbing my arm saying, please, please, please don't go. I said, no, it's okay. I'm going to be right back. You stay right here. And I left that jail. And the question I had in my mind was, who is responsible for this? And the answer is, we are. We are. We've created this distance from the poorest and most vulnerable children in our society. We've allowed them to kind of fester and fend and cope with unimaginable problems. We've gotten so far away, we don't see the trauma and the injury and the cruelty that we are subjecting them to by our distance. Many of you have heard your whole life that if there's a bad neighborhood, you stay away from it. If there are bad schools, you don't go to them. If there are places where there's poverty and abuse and neglect, stay as far away as you possibly can. I'm here tonight to tell you that the opposite is what we need to do if we're about justice. We've got to get closer to those places where there's poverty and abuse and neglect. We've got to go inside those bad schools. We've got to get inside jails and prisons. We've got to get closer to the people who are coming out of these institutions. We've got to hold those children who are vulnerable and neglected and marginalized closer. And I'm here to tell you that there's power in proximity, that sometimes you don't think you have the tools and skills necessary to change these things. But I'm here to tell you that just sometimes getting proximate can make the difference. The second